What is an incident? If you see smoke, if you see a fire, that's an incident. The date is 7-21-24, and this is the Sunday after the CrowdStrike event. Which brings up the topic of incident and incident response. What is an incident? If you Google incident, you'll find a definition of something exciting or something dangerous. Uh, if you Google incident response, you're going to get a lot of sponsored ads coming at you for people trying to sell you stuff because that stuff is something to do with cybersecurity because incident response is a term that has kind of been attached to cybersecurity as a whole. So we're going to talk about incident response and what that means and how as a user you can help incident response with the companies that you work for. And if you're an IT professional or a cybersecurity professional, you're going to need to know these things because they're probably going to be part of policies and procedures that your organization is going to have perhaps you stand up. So pay attention. An incident can be anything. I know that sounds pretty general, but if you go to certain workplaces, you'll see a sign on the wall that says zero days since our last incident. That's obviously a bad story because that means something just happened that day. But their goal is to have 36 days, 100 days since an incident. Well, that, that warehouse, that construction site, that, that forklift yard, uh, is not talking about incident response, but they have incidents too. And the term incident response has kind of been hijacked and is not just supposed to be about cybersecurity. You as an IT professional or you as a business owner are certainly going to care about the incident if you lose power. You're certainly going to care about the incident if the sprinklers go off or if there's a fire. You're going to care about the incident if outside your office, two large vehicles collide and the traffic to your location is now hindered and people can't come to you. That's an incident. It's an incident to you. It's impacting your business. So incident is a greater term. However, we are going to dial in on the, how it affects IT and cybersecurity infrastructure. First off, we cannot understand as a cybersecurity professional all of the ins and outs of what your computer does day to day. Unless you're the federal government and even they typically don't. Uh, meaning, does the print driver on your computer pop up at one o'clock every day and say, checking your ink, your ink is good. Thanks, HP. Um, uh, or they're trying to get you to buy a product. There's a pop-up, and that pop-up happens on a regular occurrence, and you as the user of the system understand this is normal behavior. Normal behavior is clearly not an incident. If we go look up the, de the exact definition on the NIST website, uh, that's NIST.gov, which stands for National Institutes of Standards and Technologies. We'll talk about NIST and get into all the incidents of that later. Uh, they say an incident is an occurrence that actually or potentially jeopardizes the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of an information system or the information the system processes, stores, or transmits, or that constitutes a violation or imminent threat of violation of security policies, security procedures, or acceptable use policies. Now, I know that that's a mouthful, but that's also what a lot of policies and procedures sound like, uh, almost stereo instructions. Now, how do you build out an incident response plan? Well, that'll be a conversation that we have at another time where I walk you through literally building an incident response plan because most organizations don't have one, and one of the reasons that they don't have one is that they don't know how to develop one. So we're gonna take that excuse off the table. But the concept of what's an incident that I as the user need to care about is anything that is abnormal to you, the user. You might have a printer attached to your computer that is not attached to everyone else in the organization. 
maybe you're the accountant and you're printing off checks with a special magnetic ink that is a security feature. Well, you're the only one with that printer, or you should be uh, the only one that has access to that printer, and you need to be aware of how that works. Well, if you've sat at that computer for 200 days, you're aware of how that works. You're aware of what kind of errors and what kind of problems you might have day to day. Also, if you suddenly see a pop-up on your screen that says, warning, warning, you know, your, your computer is being locked down. There is a virus. There is a problem. One, don't call the phone number that's on that. Call your actual help desk. Call your actual team that is meant to handle an incident. If that isn't a team that isn't clear to you, you don't know what your procedures are, you go to your manager. Your manager should be the person that says, eh, I'm gonna call a local IT company, I'm gonna call our IT company, I'm gonna call our help desk, I'm gonna put a ticket in. But that's an incident. An incident that might be, as according to NIST, jeopardize the CIA triad, the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of that data and that information system, that IS. So you've got a possible incident that, you know, they got this, it doesn't matter if it's a pop-up that is just a scammy fake Microsoft number. It's still an incident. You need to go find out how that happened. And there's a team of people that you should have or that you should have on call that find out why that happened and, and resolves it so that the incident is no longer a threat. That incident could be more serious. That incident could easily be, I have a bunch of foreign characters popping up on my screen. If you are working at a computer and you've worked at that computer for two years straight, and you've never seen Chinese, Russian, French, it could be Spanish. I'm in Texas, and if a bunch of Mexican Spanish characters pop up on the screen, that's an incident, unless you're expecting that. But there's certain, lots of people that have multiple languages set up on their computer. So that isn't abnormal for them. An incident is anything that happens that's abnormal. If you get an MFA code suddenly sent to your phone, suddenly sent to your email, something is asking for an MFA code and you didn't elicit that, you didn't do anything on your side that you expect to cause that to happen. That's an incident. Bring your team in, whoever that team is. Bring your manager in, say, hey, this has happened. This is happening consistently. Uh, MFA bombing, uh, multi-factor authentication bombing, is where somebody just keeps hitting the MFA, hoping that you're gonna hit accept, hoping that you're gonna hit allow, hoping that they're gonna be able to just brute force their way through the multi-factor levels of security that you have put in place. Those count as incidents. Again, an incident is anything out of the ordinary that you would go and tell somebody about. If you walked into the kitchen at your office and, and, and somebody started to clean the dishes at your office, maybe they do that one, just like they clean out the fridge every Friday. Maybe they, they do all the dishes every Friday washing all the coffee cups, and suddenly there's suds coming out of the dishwasher, you know that that's not supposed to happen, or at least you should, uh, and that's not normal. That's an incident. You're not gonna be the person to clean it up, probably, but you're gonna go tell who's responsible to clean that up. If a toilet's clogged, that's an incident. You're gonna bring in the people who are in charge of that. If you see smoke, if you see a fire, that's an incident. You already, as a normal person, realize, I need to call the fire department. Maybe I need to call 911. Somebody, unfortunately, fell down three flights of stairs. Those are stone or marble stairs. This is gonna be a bad day for them. I need to call for an ambulance. I need to call 911. That's an incident. Think of accident at the same time you think incident but you need to understand that it's your duty as a user of an information system to incorporate these tasks and roles. And if you don't know what to do, you need to bring the attention of that to your manager 
or your managing team or somebody who is in charge of answering all of the questions to you that you don't know. Because if you don't have an incident response policy, if you don't have an incident response plan, people are going to act in ways that you as the organization manager, management owner, might not want them to. Maybe you don't want a bunch of fire trucks to show up at your office because of a smoke issue. And the smoke issue is uh, instead of the dishwasher spitting soap everywhere, it, it's just got a hot heat cycle and there's steam coming off of it. And somebody comes and is like, oh man, the, the dishwasher's on fire and they call the fire department. If everyone is like, hey everyone, if the dishwasher's steaming, it just steams when it's in its dry cycle. Everybody just needs to be aware of that. Don't call the fire department. That should be in a document. That document should be written up. That document should be passed around. Just like in that incident response plan, what do we do in case of a fire? What do we do in case of a flood? Is our server room next to our bathroom? And if so, and the server room floods, what do we do? All of those incidents, which are not just cyber attacks, belong in that incident re response policy, that incident response plan, the IRP, as you're going to see abbreviated in a lot of places. But that can just as easily be a virus warning, a ransomware warning, a warning of somebody. If somebody emails you and says, hey, I'm going to attack your organization. I'm going to hack you. I'm going to compromise you. I've got some passwords. I found you on the dark web. I'm coming after you. That's an incident that needs to be reported just as much as a virus pop up, just as much as a ransomware pop up, just as much of a bunch of foreign characters showing up on the screen. You need to report that to management and management then needs to take action. And that management might be the only crew that has access to those things. And that's an incident. And that's how you should be handling your incidents internally. You should have something written down that you can follow as the end user. If your management, we're going to have another video for management. And for IT or cybersecurity professionals, we're going to walk you through how to create an incident response policy and plan using the NIST 800. Hope you all have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe.